the most mysterious angel in the Bible, the Ophanim. Origins of the Ophanim. The Ophanim are deeply intertwined with the movements and will of God. When the living creatures moved, the wheels beside them moved. And when the living creatures rose from the ground, the wheels also rose. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 19. Historical context. We read of these angels in the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel was written during a very tough and challenging time for the Israelites, known as the Babylonian exile in the 6th century BCE. This was when they were taken away from their homeland against their will. During this hard time, when their religion and society were being turned upside down, Ezekiel shared his prophecies and visions, including those about the Ophanim. The depiction of the Ophanim aligns with the broader theme in Ezekiel of God's mobility. In a time when the temple in Jerusalem, seen as God's earthly dwelling, was destroyed, the vision of the Ophanim suggested that God's presence was not confined to any single place, but was instead dynamic and omnipresent. What are Ophanim angels? Angels have always been a subject of fascination and curiosity in religious and cultural narratives. Among these celestial beings, the Ophanim holds a special place. By celestial beings, we are simply referring to them as spiritual entities that exist in heaven, as part of God's divine order. They are often seen as messengers or servants of God, each with their own distinct roles and characteristics. The term Ophanim originates from Hebrew meaning wheels, which describes their unique representation in the scriptures. Ophanims are unique compared to other types of angels. They are shown as both amazing spiritual beings and mysterious symbols. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel. Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 13. The use of the word wheel is deeply symbolic. In many cultures and religious texts, wheels represent cycles, movement, and continuity. Here, it suggests the dynamic nature of the divine plan and the continuous motion of God's will in the universe. The phrase, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel, indicates that these wheels, often him, were being addressed or commanded. This implies that they are sentient and responsive, playing an active role in the vision and by extension in the divine order. The often him, are closely connected to God's throne, showing they have an important place among heavenly beings. Theologians often see the Ophanim as representing God's omnipresence and the mysterious ways his commands are carried out. They are considered integral to understanding the divine realm and its workings. The term Ophanim is derived from the Hebrew word Ophan, which translates to wheel in English. This name is both literal and symbolic, revealing much about their nature and function. The wheel is a symbol. In the context of the Ophanim, it suggests an ongoing dynamic presence in the execution of divine will. The Ophanim are most notably mentioned in the book of Ezekiel specifically in Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 15 through 21, where they are described as wheels within wheels, full of eyes all around. This alone sets them apart from the more familiar depictions of angels with human-like forms and wings. The eyes symbolize knowledge and awareness, suggesting that these angels are all-seeing or omniscient a trait that aligns with the divine attribute of omnipresence. This scripture is part of a larger vision experienced by the prophet Ezekiel, filled with symbolic imagery and deep spiritual meaning. 
This part comes in, where Ezekiel describes a vision involving four living creatures and a set of wheels associated with them. These wheels are what the Bible refers to as Ophanim. As I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their workmanship was like sparkling barrel, and all four had the same form, their appearance and workmanship being as if one wheel were within another. Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 15 through 16. These specific verses introduce us to the Ophanim. In these verses, Ezekiel describes his vision of four living creatures. The wheels are described as sparkling like beryl, which are precious gemstone, indicating their divine and impressive nature. They are compared to beryl, a precious stone, which shows they are valuable and pure, just like important heavenly objects. Each wheel looks like it is made of one wheel inside another wheel, showing a complicated and mysterious design. These wheels are not like regular ones, but are special and very impressive. This unusual design indicates that there's something very complex and mysterious about God. It might represent how God's plans have many different parts and how the spiritual world and the physical world are connected. The design of a wheel inside another wheel can be thought of as a symbol for the complex ways God works, which are usually too difficult for people to fully understand. Also, the wheel's ability to move in any direction without turning, as described in the verses, may symbolize God's ability to be everywhere and know everything. Their appearance. The living creatures mentioned alongside the wheels appear elsewhere in the Bible. For instance, similar beings are described in Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, suggesting a common theme of divine presence and majesty. Also, in front of the throne there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had a face like a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. This scripture provides a detailed and symbolic description of a vision experienced by the Apostle John. This vision, like Ezekiel's vision of the Ophanim, features celestial beings and is rich in details. Let's take a look at the meaning of these verses and their connection to the Ophanim described in Ezekiel. John talks about a throne in heaven, which represents God's powerful and supreme rule. The sea of glass represents a barrier between God and creation, emphasizing His holiness and majesty. The four living creatures John sees are full of eyes and have different forms, a lion, an ox, a human, and an eagle. The eyes symbolize awareness and vigilance, while the different forms could represent the fullness and diversity of God's creation. These creatures continually praise God, emphasizing His eternal holiness and power. The scene reflects the overwhelming holiness and majesty of God's presence. The diverse forms of the creatures might represent various aspects of God's creation. Strength, lion, service, ox, intelligence, human, and swiftness, eagle. The beings in Revelation constantly serve and praise God, showing how heavenly beings always work for the divine purpose. 
Both visions convey the nature of God and his divine order. The complex design of the Ophidim and the diverse forms of the creatures in Revelation symbolize different aspects of God's character and the mysteries of his divine plan. In general, the visions in Ezekiel and Revelation are part of a larger theme in the Bible. These books use symbols to express deep spiritual truths and what's happening in heaven. They show us a bit of the spiritual world and how God relates to everything he has made. Both Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 15 through 21 and Revelation chapter 4 verses 6 through 8 make us think about how majestic and mysterious God is. They tell us that God is always there. He rules over everything he has created and heavenly beings are always worshiping him. These parts of the Bible invite us to worship God and understand that his plans are big and complex. Where can I go from your spear? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Psalm chapter 139 verses 7 through 10. The central theme here is the omnipresence of God. The idea that God is present everywhere and at all times. There is no place in the universe, whether it be the heights of heaven or the depths of the grave, where one can escape from God's presence. Connection to the Ophanim The movement of the Ophanim symbolizes God's ability to be present in all places and see all things. The wheel's eyes and their ability to move in any direction without hindrance reflect God's omniscience, all-knowing nature, and omnipresence. Just like Psalm chapter 139 says that God is everywhere in the universe, the Ophanim, who can move in any direction, shows that God's presence reaches everywhere. The eyes on the Ophanim's wheels and how they can move in any direction or like what the psalm says about God's power to see everything and be everywhere. Both this psalm and how the Ophanim are shown make us feel amazed by how big God is and comforted by knowing he is always with us. This mix of amazement and comfort shows a deep spiritual knowledge of what God is like. Daniel Chapter 7 verses 9 through 10 is a passage from the book of Daniel, another major prophetic book in the Bible. Similar to Ezekiel's visions, it gives us a peek into the heavenly world, especially showing the greatness and power of God's throne. This part of the Bible is closely related in theme and symbols to Ezekiel's visions of the Ophanim. As I look, Thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow, the hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him, ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 through 10. The Ancient of Days as a title for God emphasizes his eternal nature. The white clothing and hair symbolize purity and wisdom. The throne of God is depicted as being ablaze, signifying God's consuming power and glory. The mention of wheels aligns with a description of the Ophidim in Ezekiel, suggesting mobility and omnipresence. The river of fire could symbolize the purifying and judging power of God. 
The huge number of attendants shows how big God's royal court is and how great his power is. Connection to the Ophanim The most direct connection between Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 through 10 and the vision of the Ophanim in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 15 through 21, is the mention of wheels. In Ezekiel, the wheels, Ophanim, are described as complex, moving along with the living creatures. In Daniel, the wheels are part of God's flaming throne, emphasizing the dynamic and powerful nature of God's presence. In both visions of Ezekiel and Daniel, the wheels show that God is actively involved in our world. They show that He can do things and be present in our world while still being a heavenly being. The part in Daniel where thrones are set up and books are opened shows that God is the highest judge. The amazing way these visions describe things shows how great, holy, and powerful God is. The impressive and grand way these scenes are described shows that God has the highest power over everything. Both sections of the Bible use strong and meaningful words to make us think about God's characteristics, like being everywhere at once, all-powerful, and acting as a supreme judge. The Ophanim and the Fiery Throne are descriptions that show these qualities, helping us understand the deep and sometimes hard-to-grasp aspects of God. The Bible uses these images to help us picture parts of God that are hard to understand. These visions give us a way to think about God's power and presence, helping us to really appreciate how great and powerful He is. So, when Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 15 through 16 describes the Ophanim, it's not just about how they look, but also about their deeper spiritual meaning. This description shows us some of God's special qualities, His magnificence, His presence everywhere, and the mysterious ways He works in the world. Their Movement The wheels of the Ophanim can move in any direction without physically rotating. This might symbolize the omnipresence and omniscience of God, able to move and see in all directions simultaneously. Whenever they moved, they moved in any of their four directions without turning as they moved. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 17. Wherever the Spirit was about to go, they would go in that direction. And the wheels rose close beside them, for the Spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood still, these stood still. And when those rose from the earth, the wheels rose close beside them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 20 through 21. The movement of the wheels is not random, but is directed by the spirit, indicating divine guidance and purpose. The movement of the wheels is not independent, it's entirely in sync with the living creatures. The term spirit in the verse is critical. It's the driving force behind the movements of both the creatures and the wheels. In the biblical context, spirit often refers to the divine presence or the Holy Spirit. This suggests that the actions of these celestial beings are guided by divine intent. The fact that the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels suggests a deep interconnectedness between the Ophanim and God. It's not just physical proximity, but a profound union, indicating that the movements and actions of these celestial beings are expressions of God's will. Just as the wheels move with the creatures, symbolizing guidance and purpose, our lives can be seen as guided by a higher power or purpose. The idea is key to trusting in God's divine plan, 
where our paths align with greater intentions beyond our immediate understanding. The concept of divine guidance is common in other parts of the Bible. For example, He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. Psalm chapter 23, verse 3. This aligns with the fact that Ezekiel was being led by the Spirit. In relation to the Spirit in the wheel of the offering, this scripture emphasizes the theme of divine guidance. Psalm chapter 23, verse 3 speaks of God leading the faithful along righteous paths, while Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 20 through 21 describes Eophanim moving in perfect harmony with the Spirit, symbolizing divine direction. Righteous path and order in Psalm chapter 23, verse 3 refers to paths of righteousness, seen as a metaphor for the right order or divine will, which is also a theme in Ezekiel's vision, where the Ophanim move according to the Spirit's direction, signifying alignment with God's will. The movement of the Ophanim in Ezekiel shows a complete dependence on the Spirit for direction, similar to the psalmist's trust in God for guidance along the right path. Therefore, the Ophanim as an entity, deeply connected to God's divine Spirit, moving and existing in perfect harmony with the will of God, does not only give us a glimpse into the complex nature of celestial beings, but also offers a symbolic representation of divine guidance and the interconnectedness of all aspects of God's creation. Just as he often moves with the Spirit, we are also guided by unseen forces, suggesting a divine presence in our lives guiding us towards our paths. These verses invite us to reflect on the mysteries of the divine and the ways in which the spiritual realm intersects with our earthly existence. The way the wheels move together with the living creatures shows a strong spiritual connection between what God wants, shown by the creatures, and how that is carried out, shown by the wheels. Connection to Isaiah The extraordinary movement of the wheels in Ezekiel can be seen as a metaphor for this truth. God's ways and movements are beyond human understanding. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 through 9. While not directly referencing the Ophanim, this scripture offers insights that can be related to these celestial beings, as described in Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 15 through 21. This implies that there is a vast difference between God's understanding and actions and those of humans. It emphasizes the divine perspective and methods as being far beyond human comprehension. In its broader context, Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 17 about the Ophanim emphasizes a key message about the nature of God and His divine workings. It suggests that God's presence and actions are not as limited or predictable as human actions are. In other words, we are encouraged to recognize and respect the greatness and wonder of God, whose actions and plans are beyond our understanding, and whose presence is everywhere in the world. The Ophanim and the Nature of God The nature of God is complex and multifaceted. This complexity is reflected in the attributes and roles of the Ophanim angels. To understand this connection, here are some key attributes of God and how they relate to the Ophanim. Sovereignty God is the ultimate authority, controlling all events and outcomes. He is not answerable to anyone, and His will is final. The sovereignty of God is the ultimate authority, having complete control over everything in the universe. 
This idea is strongly linked to how the Alphanim angels are shown in the Bible, particularly in the book of Ezekiel. The sovereignty of God means he is the supreme ruler over all creation. Nothing happens without his knowledge or permission. Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. Psalm chapter 115 verse 3. This emphasizes that God's will is paramount and he has the ultimate authority over all things. God's sovereignty also implies that everything happens according to his divine plan and purpose, which reflects the belief that God's purposes will always be fulfilled despite any human actions. Holiness. God is completely pure and set apart from all creation. He is unique in his perfection. The holiness of God is a concept that describes how God is completely pure, perfect, and separate from all that is evil or sinful. In simple terms, it means that God is absolutely good and morally flawless, without any trace of wrong or injustice in him. God's holiness means he is totally pure and without sin. He represents the highest standard of moral perfection. Holiness also implies a complete separation from anything that is sinful or evil. God is utterly distinct from all forms of corruption. God's actions and decisions are always perfectly just and good. He never does anything wrong or unfair. Because God is holy, he deserves our respect, reverence, and worship. His holiness sets him apart as worthy of complete devotion. God's holiness is about being entirely separate from everything else in creation, especially in terms of purity and moral integrity. The Ophanim's unique appearance sets them apart from other beings, reflecting the otherness and separateness associated with God's holiness. Their proximity to God's throne in Ezekiel's vision signifies their direct service to the Most Holy God. This placement itself is a testament to their participation in the Divine Holiness. The eyes covering the Ophanim suggest a state of perpetual vigilance and awareness of God's all-seeing knowledge, a part of His holy nature. Their ability to move in any direction without turning speaks to the limitless nature of God's power and presence, aspects of His holiness that transcend human understanding. Omnipotence. The omnipotence of God refers to His all-powerful nature, meaning God has unlimited power and can do anything that aligns with His nature and character. This concept is fundamental to understanding who God is. I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. Job chapter 42 verse 2. The Ophanim's ability to move in any direction effortlessly symbolizes this limitless power. In other words, omnipotence means there are no limits to God's power. He can create, sustain, destroy, and control all things in the universe. God's power is always consistent with his other attributes, such as his goodness, justice, and holiness. This means he cannot do anything that contradicts his own nature. The Ophanim, as described in the book of Ezekiel, are a class of celestial beings associated with the throne of God. Are Ophanim's angels the Ophanim, mentioned in the Bible, are often classified as angels, but their unique characteristics set them apart from the typical depiction of angels. To understand whether the Ophanim are truly angels, we need to explore their biblical description and compare them with the general concept of angels in the Bible. In the Bible, angels are heavenly beings made by God. They are usually shown as God's messengers or helpers, 
doing what God wants and delivering his messages to people. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Ministering spirits suggests that angels are spiritual beings whose primary purpose is to serve. They are not merely passive observers, but active participants in God's plan. The verse specifically states that angels are sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. This indicates that one of their roles is to assist, guide, protect, and provide for the needs of believers or those destined for salvation. Unlike the common portrayal of angels, the Ophidim are described as wheels intersecting each other and covered in eyes. This appearance is unique and does not match the typical winged human form of angels. The Ophidim's role seems to be closely linked to God's throne, which means they have a role in God's presence and carrying out his plans on a larger universe-wide scale. This is a bit different from the usual role of angels, who act as messengers or guides for people. Theologians have often debated the exact nature of the Ophanim. Some consider them a distinct class of angels due to their direct service to God, while others view them as a unique type of celestial being separate from angels. Ophanim and the general role of angels. In the broader context, angels are viewed as messengers and servants of God. They act as intermediaries between the divine and the human, carrying out God's will, offering guidance, and providing protection to us. While all angels share this overarching purpose, each class has its specific roles and characteristics that contribute to the celestial hierarchy and the functioning of the universe. In the world of angels, they are grouped into various levels or groups, each having its own special characteristics and role. The Ophanim are one of these groups and are often seen as part of the third level in heaven. They are known as the thrones. Their main job is to carry God's throne and show his fairness and power. This is why the Ophanim is quite unique from the other angels. Seraphim Often depicted as the highest order, Seraphim are associated with surrounding the throne of God, endlessly praising Him. The term Seraphim means the burning ones, indicative of their intense love and purity. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 3 describes them as having six wings, with two covering their face, two their feet, and two they use to fly. The seraphim and ophanim are both fascinating celestial beings mentioned in the Bible, each with distinct characteristics and roles within the heavenly hierarchy. Cherubim. Another well-known class, cherubim, are depicted as guardians of God's glory. Cherubims are known for their proximity to God and their role in various divine narratives. The cherubim are often described as having multiple faces, wings, and other elements that signify their divine nature and power. Each had four faces, and each of them had four wings. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 6. While cherubim with faces and wings, symbolizing various aspects of creation, the Ophidim have mystical wheels, emphasizing the continuous motion and order of the divine. Cherubim are often seen as guardians and attendants to God's divine presence, whereas the Ophidim are part of the divine chariot, indicating a role in the direct manifestation of God's will. Both cherubim and ophanim are closely associated with the throne of God, but in slightly different ways. With the cherubim, they are often depicted in the Bible as being directly in the presence of God, 
even supporting his throne. This indicates their high status and intimate relationship with God. And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, where their face is one to another, toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be. Exodus chapter 25 verse 20. On the other hand, the Ophanim are part of God's chariot in Ezekiel's vision. This shows that they are near God's throne too, but their role is more about doing God's work and carrying out His plans. Roles and Functions The Ophanim's unique role. They are shown as wheels, which might mean they are related to the idea of God's chariot. This shows how God moves and has power. The eyes on the wheel suggest they are always watching over the world, which fits with the belief that God is everywhere and knows everything. In Ezekiel's vision, the Ophanim show a special and mysterious side of how angels are understood. They are different from seraphim and cherubim, who are mainly seen as angels that worship and protect. The Ophanim appears to show us the way God organizes things and how his plans happen in the world. Importance of the Throne of God The Throne of God is the center of divine authority and power. It's a place from where God's choices, judgments, and plans come out, affecting the whole universe. The Throne signifies God's governance over all aspects of creation both the physical and the spiritual realms. It's a reminder of the order and balance maintained by the divine will. From his throne, God gives out fairness and kindness. It's a place where God's sense of what's right and his caring nature come together, showing us a full picture of who he is. Throughout the Bible, the throne of God is a focal point of worship and praise acknowledging God's ultimate authority and benevolence. In many biblical visions, the throne is where God's presence is most directly experienced. It's often depicted as the center of heavenly activity. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was standing in heaven, and one sitting on the throne. Revelation chapter 4 verse 2. The throne is also where God dispenses judgment and mercy, highlighting his role as the ultimate judge and redeemer. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. Revelation chapter 4 verse 5. The flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder represent how powerful and majestic God is. This type of description is commonly found in the Bible to show how God's presence is powerful and really amazing. This vision sets the stage for the heavenly worship that follows in the later verses of Revelation chapter 4. The way it's described makes you feel a deep respect and amazement, which is just right for worshiping God. The Ophanim are first introduced in the book of Ezekiel, where they are described in a vision that includes the throne of God. Being bearers of the divine throne in a religious or a spiritual context essentially means being responsible for upholding or supporting the presence and authority of God. The throne represents God's supreme power and authority. It's a symbol of his rule over the universe. The beings described as bearers of the throne are seen as upholding, supporting, or accompanying this divine authority. They are often depicted as playing a crucial role in maintaining the order and execution of God's will. While the book of Ezekiel doesn't explicitly use the term bearers of the divine throne for the Ophanim, their close proximity to God's presence implies a role in supporting or symbolizing His authority. In Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 26 through 28, the prophet describes a vision of God's throne.
and above the expanse over their heads, there was the likeness of a throne, in appearance like sapphire. And seated above the likeness of a throne was a likeness with a human appearance. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire around within it, from the appearance of his loins upward. And from the appearance of his loins downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and there was brightness around him. Here, the throne is shown as a grand and amazing symbol that represents God being present. The vision begins with Ezekiel seeing something that resembled a throne made of sapphire. In ancient times, sapphire was a highly valued gemstone, known for its deep blue color. It was often associated with royalty and divine favor. The use of sapphire in the vision symbolizes majesty, beauty, and the preciousness of the divine throne. In biblical symbolism, Blue was often associated with the divine and with heaven. The sapphire, known for its deep blue color, strengthens this link and makes the vision feel more heavenly and beyond the ordinary world. Ezekiel uses sapphire, a stone we know for mirth to describe God's throne, making it easier for us to picture. But this heavenly throne is much more splendid than anything on earth showing that God's world is way more amazing than anything we can think of or experience. This throne is positioned above the heads of the living creatures, possibly cherubim, described earlier in the chapter. The throne symbolizes God's sovereignty and divine authority. On the throne, Ezekiel sees a figure that resembles a man. This description is significant as it represents God in a way that's relatable to humans. Though it's understood that this is a mere representation and not a physical likeness of God. The figure is described as glowing like metal, full of fire from the waist up and like fire from the waist down. This imagery of fire and brilliant light signifies God's purity, power, and the overwhelming intensity of his presence. The appearance of a rainbow, symbolizing hope, promise, and the continuity of God's covenant with humanity. The rainbow adds a sense of beauty and peace to the otherwise awe-inspiring and intense vision. Ezekiel's response to this vision is to fall face down a common reaction in the Bible when individuals are confronted with the supernatural power of God. It reflects humility, reverence, and the overwhelming impact of encountering God's glory. The passage concludes with Ezekiel hearing the voice of God, indicating that this vision is not just about seeing God's glory, but also about receiving His message. Those referred to as bearers of the divine throne are seen as essential in upholding and manifesting God's will and authority. They are integral to the maintenance of divine order. The role is often understood symbolically. Ophanim today. Ophanim has had a big impact on art, books, and popular culture. Their description in the book of Ezekiel has led to many different kinds of art about them, from old religious paintings to today's digital images. This has helped change how people in Western culture think of angels. In ancient religious art, they were often depicted in accordance with Ezekiel's vision, emphasizing their otherworldly and mysterious nature. This portrayal challenged the conventional depiction of angels as human-like figures with wings. Instead, artists explored more abstract and symbolic representations, highlighting the divine mystery and omnipresence associated with the Ophanim. In modern times, this influence extends to digital art and visual media. The Ophanim have been pictured in many different ways, 
from dreamy and symbolic styles to more realistic drawings of wheels and eyes. This change in how they are shown in art shows both a lasting interest in these beings and a wider effort to creatively express spiritual ideas. The impact of the Ophanim goes beyond just art. In books and stories, these angels have encouraged authors to write about topics like godliness, mysterious spiritual truths, and otherworldly phenomena. In popular culture, the Ophanim have appeared in various forms, from characters in fantasy novels and films, to motifs in video games and graphic novels. These representations mix classic ideas from the Bible with modern views, attracting many people and making them more interested in the mysterious parts of studying angels. In conclusion, the Ophanim angels are very interesting and significant in both religious and cultural settings. They represent a special mix of mystery and deep respect. The way the Ophanim are described in the Bible especially in Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 15 through 21, with their unique look and mysterious purpose, helps us better understand the order of heaven and also adds to our culture and art. The picture of wheels within wheels full of eyes goes beyond mere visual representation, symbolizing vigilance and divine omniscience. The influence of the Ophanim is felt in religious studies and everyday culture. They usually represent the incredible complexity and beauty of what God has created and how everything is organized. The reason they are still important in both religious and popular contexts is that they make us feel wonder and think deeply. They encourage us to think about the huge and complex spiritual world that is connected to our own reality. This intriguing blend of the mystical and the tangible makes the Ophanim a captivating subject, continually inviting us to explore the deeper meanings and implications of their presence in our spiritual narrative. Let us pray. Dear Lord, right now, we are here with open hearts and open minds asking for the wisdom and guidance that your special angels, the Ophanim, represent so well in your great plan. We are humbled by the majesty of the Ophanim, those magnificent creatures of your creation, whose very existence speaks of your glory and power. Like they constantly move around your throne with never-ending loyalty, let it remind us of our ongoing journey towards your never-ending love and kindness. Lord, in our daily lives, filled with challenges and uncertainties, we often find ourselves at a crossroads, unsure of which path to take. Grant us, we pray, the wisdom of the Ophanim, to see beyond the immediate, to discern your will in the midst of life's complexities. Like the Ophanim, who move effortlessly in any direction, help us to navigate our lives with the same grace and agility, always moving towards your light. We ask for the courage to face our trials and tribulations with the same unyielding faith as the Ophanim. In moments of doubt and fear, Remind us that just as these celestial beings are covered in eyes, you too are ever watchful over us. May this knowledge comfort us, knowing that we are never alone and that your loving gaze is always upon us. The Ophanim are beautiful and amazing in their own special way, showing us how creative you are. Help us to see and value the different kinds of beauty in the world and in ourselves. Let us realize and be thankful for the special abilities and talents you have given us. May we use these gifts to honor you and to help others with kindness and humbleness. Lord, as the Ophanim are ever in motion, 
so too are our lives constantly changing. In times of change and transition, be our steady hand. Guide us with your wisdom, that we may embrace the new paths you lay before us with confidence and peace, trusting in your plan for our lives. We draw inspiration from the Ophanim's role as bearers of your throne, a reminder of your omnipresence in our lives. May we always carry your presence within us, radiating your love and light to all we encounter. Help us to be ambassadors of your peace, bringing comfort and hope to those in need. In moments of stillness and contemplation, let us feel the presence of the Ophanim, encouraging us to delve deeper into our relationship with you. May our prayers and meditations ascend to you like sweet incense, a testament to our devotion and love for you. Finally, Lord, we pray for the unity and harmony that the Ophanim represent. In a world often divided, let their example remind us of the importance of working together for the common good, respecting and valuing each other, despite our differences. May their ceaseless praise of your glory inspire us to live in constant gratitude, praising your name in all circumstances. We thank you, Lord, for the mystery and beauty of the Ophanim angels, and for the lessons they impart upon us. May their example guide us, their wisdom enlighten us, and their devotion inspire us to draw ever closer to you. In your holy name we pray, amen.